Unfiltered. Tonight, we get a little serious. We talk about racism a lot here on the Factor Uncensored, and the issue is impossible to ignore with stories like this one out of Massachusetts. A 14-year-old white teen accused of attempted murder after repeatedly dunking a black child in a pond of water back in July. Now, according to court documents, one of the bystanders, another juvenile, made an ugly joke during the incident, referring to the victim as George Floyd. The kids involved are so young, it makes us wonder if racism will ever die in this country. We posted the question on Fox26Houston.com. 83% of you voted no, it will never die and 17 percent of you said yes with time joining us to talk about this retired judge mike well he's not retired judge judge mike fields sports journalist barry laminack and matchmaker amber Lowe. so judge fields when you see a situation like this where the the young white kids invited the the black male to hang out with them spend time with them over the weekend and it turns to ugliness. Is this just being mischievous or is this a sign of racism? It's a sign of racism, mm -hmm. mischievous racism. Uh, and I don't think that you can separate the two that easily. Kids are not learning this from television. Mm -hmm. They're learning it at home. They're, they're repeating what they hear their parents say, their grandparents. There's a generational legacy of racism in this country that goes back before the foundation of this nation and it was built on the backs of black slaves and that that generational demon still still plagues us now and so when we hear all it all it will take will be time <laughs> to let racism die out that's not the case what we're seeing now you know we're if not it passed from one generation to another we're not seeing it now. It will happen. It just won't happen in my lifetime, my children's lifetime, or my children's children's lifetime. But it'll happen. It has to happen. I think that the arc of the moral universe is long, and it bends toward justice. Uh, and justice cries out for equality. And Amber, what we've heard is, and, and also something we've heard, as more we get more mixed race, right, and and more people become indistinguishable from one another it'll be better but your thoughts about that and, and tell us a little bit about your background yes. so people can understand your yeah. perspective so I've um, uh, been a matchmaker 20 years so I deal with relationships for 20 years and I've seen a lot in relationships myself personally I'm interracially married to a black man mm -hmm. my children are biracial and we've gone through um, we've seen a lot in the last 30 years of actually being interracial and I'm saddened to say that I feel like it is not improved and I feel like biracial kids I really as you know someone what do your kids experience when they go to school you know, my kids have told me that to the white people, they're too black. To the black people, they're not black enough. I mean, they, they deal with the racism on, bo on both sides. And so it's very, it's very hard. And I didn't really realize what I was bringing them into. As I said before, you can not be racist but still be ignorant mm -hmm. to the problems in the world. And I agree that it's going to take several generations. I don't think that, my, that I will ever live to see that. But I think you love who you love. And my, my son is now interracially married to a Hispanic woman my daughter is interracially married to a white man and so I think it just it's you love who you love and I think that depending on how you grew up I 100% agree children that are two years old elementary five years old is taught and at the end of the day people have to do better because we have to hold accountability to the parents on what they're learning at home because yes I but I, I, I agree I disagree to at one point that it's also part of what you're seeing on television and the radio and, and things like that are influenced but my thing is who you choose to be friends with is going to be a big part of what you deal with in life because this kid is hanging out with people he thought were his friends Mm -hmm. And they led him to destruction. The first, the first thing that, that when he gets there and they're like, hey, put your bike in the lake, I would question, like, what are your real intentions? I would leave. Right, right, exactly. So, Barry, tell us from your perspective as plain white. <laughs> <laughs> See, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm you actually, gotta break the ice. You know, you gotta break I'm the actually ice, in but, an interracial but, relationship, but she's she's but, she's Hispanic, so but they don't count that if there's no black person. That is. Do you, <laughs> do you ever foresee 
this society, we as a people, <sighs> getting to a point where race is not an issue? You know, I, I wish, I wish they were right. I don't think that, that that'll be the case, though. I think if you look back on the history of human beings, we have always looked for something to dislike about somebody else that's different than us. And nothing is easier to determine than the color of your skin. And, and unf it's unfortunate, and I'm not condoning it, but I'm saying, if you look back, we've, we've fought over uh, r differences in religion. We've fought over differences in, in money and class. <coughs> and I think we're always going to be a, a, a society that is plagued by racism, but how we, how we overcome it and how we handle it, I, I think, is, is going to be key to going forward. I don't think you're ever going to get rid of it. I just, unfortunately, I don't think and, that's and the case. Judge Field, let's bring you into this conversation. Even if you get to China, India, you have either a lighter skinned Asian or caste system in India. There's always a divide between man, human nature, that will always separate us. So is racism the, all, the end all be all? Or will we continue to have these problems even if we get past race? I think you have to distinguish one from the other, right? I think that, that arguing a caste system is the same as using political and economic power to keep a person of a different color at a disadvantage economically and, and, and in other ways. It's different. It's different. Uh, a caste system is set up to keep people of the same nationality but different sex in, in, in an economically disadvantaged position. We're talking about people thinking that they are intrinsically better than others mm -hmm. because of the color of their skin. That can't last. Because as, as we're seeing, too many people are mixing, and I think that we will no longer have one race or the other. We'll all just be people. <coughs> when we get to that place, and I don't think that that's a place that we're going to get to anytime soon, racism, I believe, as we know it, will end. That's right. a long time coming. Amber Neal, it's your job to change everything. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us. Still ahead tonight.